My name is Mike. And my name's Steve. And guess where you are? You're watching Comics, Comics TV. TV. We are your weekly fun to do everything to do with comics and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is our ninth show. We're running, uh, this one should air on August 27th, I believe it is. Somewhere right around there. Yeah, two weeks ahead. Is that right? August 27th? Something like that. Okay. End of August. But, uh... Man, we're, we're filming this one late today. Uh, usually we're not this late. Um, we're going to try and keep our eyes open. And um, and it's the 28th, by the way. Is it 20th? 28th. Okay, it's 28th. Okay. And if, if it's not, then so you're, watching, the you're watching the wrong day if it is. Yeah. Uh, we got some great stuff today. As usual, we've got our, our reviews, our previews, our news, uh, our convention mentions. We're going to do a little bit different today. Over the next couple of weeks, we might change our format over a bit we're trying to get things a, a little better a little spunkier a little spunkier we were dying out for a few weeks there we're trying to get things livelier trying to do more <coughs> excuse me the one thing that you can do is if you like us you don't have to write us as much as tell your friends you tell your friends and, and have them tell friends. someone else tell other friends and everybody and eventually we'll have at least 20 people watching there you go we'll have a giant audience so <laughs> you tell everybody you know <laughs> yeah. steve why don't you Oh, okay. Start us off with This Week in Comics. This Week in the News. The scheduled filming of Sergeant Rock has been postponed to, due to the Arnold Schwarzenegger last-minute refusal to do the project. Why was that, Steve? He's working on a Last Action Hero Part 2 and decided he didn't have to do time to do Sergeant Rock. So, the hell with him. <laughs> on Arnold, oh, I'd rather uh, see Sergeant Rock instead of Last Action Hero anyways. I didn't see the Last Action Hero, but... Anyways, okay, um, book, new book coming out from uh, DC called Demolition Man. It's based on the Warner Brothers movie. This one has been delayed due pro to production problems and um, you money. Know, think so? Yeah. Is that why? Yeah, it's because of money. Because of money. The root of all evil. The root of all evil. Okay, continuing in the movie comic book vein, there's a rumor that Michelle Pfeiffer may star in a full-length Catwoman movie, filming scheduled to start by the end of this year, which should be very interesting. Yeah, it's supposed to be full-length, just about Catwoman. I mean, they might have some... Actually, they probably won't have anything to do with Batman in there. It's probably well, going to be about her story. No, another thing on the Batman, um, rumor has it that the Batman is going to release a movie every year up until 1995 or 96. And every opposite year, one year is going to be an animated, one year is going to be a live action. Yes, Michael Keaton is going to be Batman. Not so it's animated this year, isn't it? Animated this year, this and next year they're going to have a regular Batman. Yeah, Christmas so. this year, then a new one's supposed to be out. So that should be interesting. And we gave you some news a few weeks back that may have been faulty. Uh, Green Lantern number 46 uh, might be out by the time you see this. This is supposed to have the actual, real, final return of Superman. Uh, it's... Not, Again? Not definite, but uh, yeah, we, yeah, we told you a few weeks back that whatever issue it was was going to be the real one, but this was actually part, part of the storyline of the reign of Superman, or, and it's supposed to be the, the return. Who knows? We just get this stuff and pass it on to you. Yeah. And we hope you like it, and you tell your friends. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> okay, anyways, uh, we're going to get on to our, our reviews this week. Steve is going to give us... Uh, start here with whatever he's got. I'm not sure okay. what he's doing. I'm going to start out with Lobo Convention Special Number One. This one was hilarious. The uh, color in this one is great. The storyline is great. Lobo picks up a comic. He doesn't read comics, but he picked one up. The Death of Superman. He thought was hilarious. Well, he ended up ruining that book, slapping it against his leg. So he goes to the San Diego Comic Con. He goes over to the convention trying to find a platinum Superman, Death of Superman. So he's trying everything in his power to find one. He finally finds one at the end. He starts reading it, gets to the end, starts slapping it on his leg again. This is after he destroyed the whole convention. And he destroys it. So now he's into reading comics, which I think it's great when you got other characters reading comics. But this one I gave a top rating to. Lobo is a god. Lobo the guy, hey Lobo the guy. Yeah, I saw that advertised in, uh, I think it was Advanced Comics. I had no idea what it was about. It's funny, yeah. really funny. Well, that's good. Okay, I've got, um, I've got a real special one this week. But first, 
first, I'm going to give you a bit of a commentary. This is um, very small. It's about uh, how I equ equate uh, the kind of comics I generally review with music. It's something that people can relate to. Uh, I think what I, what I review generally every week, you can cross between 103, like CFNY, and, and classical music. If you put them all together, uh, you get something that's a bit different. Uh, it's harder to find. Sometimes it's mainstream, uh, superhero kind of stuff. It's not always worth it. So if you cross all them three, or four, or whatever, that's what I review. I review everything, except for the main stuff. Okay, so now the first one this week is a very special one because not many people in this country even have this one. This is the Philistine number one from One Shot Press. Oop. This is an advanced copy. It's written by Michael Mangillo and the art is by Mike Zittle. There's no cover price yet because it is, is an advanced copy. Let me start by telling you that this is fantastic. The art in this book is great. I mean, it, it doesn't look like comic book art. Um, it's black and white as you can see, it's got great detail. The Philistine is sort of a Batman, Spider-Man type vigilante, uh, but he makes fun of those kind of people. Uh, I'd go to your local bookstore and uh, tell them that you want a copy of this and uh, get it for yourself. Because I think that, that uh, this is really a good book, it's going to be worth it. And I don't think there's going to be anybody locally that's even going to carry it. Uh, it's called the Philistine One Shot Press. Fantastic. Okay, for my next one, I'm going with X Factor number 25. This has the hologram cover, and this one, this one deals basically with the Cable Magneto story. Now, as you know, Magneto's coming back to life. So there's certain issues that you have to get to lead up to receiving it. And yes, if you can get a Magneto number zero, you have to order them. This one deals with Cable comes back. Um, for like five or six issues, everybody thought that Cable was dead. So now Cable's back to life. He comes back. His son was leading X-Force. And Exodus comes back and tries to bring uh, Cable's son and a couple other of the X factors up to this heaven place that Magneto created to make it be like amongst the perfect world for mutants but they end up trying to destroy Magneto but this this story it keeps you interested right through the whole thing with the holographic cover and that it's a little bit pricey but I would definitely recommend buying this one for the sole reason of it it does lead up to the Magneto story so I gave this one a, not a two not a three but a two yeah I don't know if you could see that but that hologram is great that uh, that really looks nice that was worth it I, I can't stand the X ones there's so many of them but looks good okay this one this one is X rated this one is um dun, 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 definitely adult stuff this is number 14, Cherry. It's the 10th anniversary of Cherry. Uh, it's by Larry Welts, uh, with assistance from others, including sometimes his wife, I believe her name is Sharon. It's from Kitchen Sink Comics, and this issue is a, Termina a Terminator parody uh, where Cherry has to go back in time uh, to, to make sure that she's conceived because the robot's out to get her mother and uh, make sure that she's not conceived. Uh, I can't open this up <laughs> because no. this is porno but it, it's good it's funny if you're an adult if you like this stuff behind the counter you gotta ask for it for my third book i'm going with gravestone number one ripped from the pages of the protectors all right yes yeah. okay this one was pretty good storyline um good color good artwork this one deals with gravestone who's one of the protectors he has his own series now is killed and he goes into another world and in another world he meets up with this girl that he apparently had killed or got killed from his mistake back on our world and she wants to get back onto our world with him so the storyline it's got a different twist to it she follows him through he gets up to the gatekeeper he has to be, beat the gatekeeper to get through which he always does and she follows him through the gates come back onto uh, our world but seeing as she came through, something drastic is supposed to happen with the world. So we're going to have to keep following this one. This one was pretty good. It sells for, oh, let's see, $2.25, which is an interesting price for a book. But I would definitely recommend it. I'd give this one a two. Very good. So, you know, I want to tell you, 
I didn't give you any numerical ratings on my book. The first one that I had was the Philistine, and that one was a definite three. Cherry was a two and a half, and my next one. Where are you getting the hash from? I've just added it. Confuse me I just more. added it in because yeah. because cherry's not not just a two, but it's not a three unless you're that kind of person. Anyways, my next one is Horus. This is 1963 series from Image. This is book five, Horus, Lord of Light. Uh, this is uh, $1.95. Stories by Alan Moore. Everybody knows Alan Moore. He's done all kinds of stuff. He's got some good art in it. Um, pencils are by Rick Wright. Very good story. It's set in the 1960s. The, uh, uh, even the ads, if I can find an ad in here. Back cover. Back cover. They're all fake, fake 1960s type ads about zits and sending it away for uh, drawing things and everything. I mean, it's great because you get this stuff. Uh, in this in this issue here, uh, it's about college, a college student that stows away to um, she stows away on the barge of a million years, and she must help Horus guide the ship through the night time, which is uh, an ancient Egyptian thing where they think that the ship rides through the night through each hour, directing the night time you know from night to day. It's kind of weird, but it's a nice story, and I, I think it's worth at least a two. I thought it was good. Cool. Um, for this week, we will continue our quick mini, mini reviews. Not sure if we're going to do this any more this way, but uh, for this week, we'll continue it. And uh, Steve, you want to start yours? Yeah, okay, I'll start. Um, this week, to start out, I'm going with Deathmate Blue. This one was nothing like the Deathmate Yellow. This one slowed down. It's sort of pricey at $4.95, but Ooh, if you're one. following the Deathmate series, pick it up. What's the difference between all those colors? Um, I don't know to tell you the truth. They started out just with the original uh, Deathmate. It was like a goldish cover, and then they went to yellow, and now blue. I think the next one's a Deathmate red. It's just a different series, so you'll know okay. different cover because it's got a picture. The picture's somewhat similar on the front. Okay. Okay, for my next one, 2099 Unlimited. Don't bother. Um, it's an overrated book. I started following the series. The Hulk series is okay, but they got a couple other series in here. I just, I wouldn't recommend it. I threw that one out. All right. Blood Seed, number one of two. This one was a really, really good book. The artwork is phenomenal. It's not that bad on price. It's a new series out, and I definitely recommend this one. This one is a free one that you can collect at your store. Uh, the Ultraverse, it explains a little bit about Ultraverse. This is issue number two. Um, ask them for it. It's free. My next one, I have a trade paperback, Batman Tales of the Demon. Now, this one was very, very good. I, I really enjoyed it. The artwork was sort of like the earlier Batman. The uh, color was good in it. The storyline was phenomenal. This one sells for, oh, let me find it on here, uh, $14.99, which is sort of pricey, Ooh. but it was definitely worth it. The next one that I have, yes, Who Killed Captain Kirk. I know who. Who killed him? Me. Okay, I Michael killed him. killed him. This one's another trade paper, paperback, trade paper book, trade paperback. This one's sixteen ninety five. This one, I wouldn't bother. This one really, it, it was a slow story. It really, the artwork was terrible, the color was terrible, it was running, eh, that's what I think about this one. If you're it, a Star Trek fan, would you like it? If you're a Star Trek fan, no. No? I'll tell you right now, no, you wouldn't. This one... I'll tell you right now, I picked this one up. It's called Enemy Ace War Idol. Don't bother. I could not understand one page of this. The artwork in here was drawn by a nine-year-old, it looks like. Colored in by his little four-year-old sister. Uh, I mean, it's just, the artwork is just absolutely terrible. This one sells for... $14.99, I wouldn't give you 99 cents at the Walmart bin, and I would definitely not recommend that one. So that's my picks for the week. Well, Steve had some harsh picks there. Mm -hmm. That's a bit different. Steve usually likes everything. What happened Slow this week? week? That must be it. Okay, I've got some good ones this week. Well, at least I think some of them. Actually, i got some bad ones, too. I'm going to try and give you everything. We're going to start out with Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, number three. This is from... Uh, what is it from? It's from Claypool Eclipse Comics. It's a decent black and white comic without all the superheroes. It's got a funny little story. Um, kind of worth it. 
That's kind of worth it. Kind you, of decide, worth it. you decide there whether it's worth it or not. Yeah, but then they're going to have to spend the money. What if they don't like it? Read it in the store. Okay, oh. this one is Lethargic Comics Weekly, number 12, from Alpha Productions. Uh, I don't know. A lot of people like this. I think this is the one that has a, yep, it has a letter from Jeff Smith of Bone in here. Uh, I thought it sucked, period. <laughs> okay, my next group here. I'm doing these as a group. This is um, the Captain's Jolting Tales. This is number one, number two, and number three. Uh, their, their little model on the side is humor in a jovial vein. By this third issue, they've gotten, the art has gotten tremendously better. Um, this is also from One Shot, which did, I got the advanced Philistine. This stuff is great. I, th I think it's hilarious. Um, there's, there's no superheroes in here. There's a vampire guy. He's a vampire slayer. He turns into a vampire, and he hates him even more then, so he spends all his nighttime driving around on a motorcycle with a uh, pick, pick on the stake <laughs> on the front of it, driving into people. And, and it's got all kinds of horror stuff. And oh. it's good, because it, it, there's not anything like this out there. It's something you got to get, you know? Something different. I like all of them. It's one-shot press. Make sure you call and or tell your... Uh, Whoever you work with, or wherever you go to buy your comics, tell them to pick it up. This is Zoot number four from Fanagraphics. Bye bye. Um, <laughs> that good, huh? Yep. Yeah, yeah. uh, Clive Barker's Acto Kid. This is a decent story. It's good art. This is from Marvel Razor Line. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. This one you might want to check out. It's a little different. Well, last one this week. Uh, she's quite nice here on the back cover, but she has nothing to do with this. This <laughs> is um, the extremist number one from DC Vertigo. The art is weird. It's uh, it's different, but it goes along with the story. It's uh, it's good. I liked it though. I think it's really good. So how many? It's one of four, and uh, I think it's really good. And uh, got a little present here that we got. Uh, I got a little surprise in the mail today. I've been writing, getting some stuff from uh, some people around. Can you get a close up of this? We've got, uh, this is Gloria Galaxy. This is a, a drawing that I received in the mail. Ooh. This is from uh, the company that does Gloria Galaxy. <laughs> here, let me tell you what it says here. That sexy little bimbo on the bright yellow paper is currently worth $34,500. Uh, she's often been called the sexiest female character in comics. She's more than a tune, more than just a contest. They get, she was created from eight different legendary sex symbols. And if you can figure out who they are, you get $34,500. Uh, they've got a couple. I'm not sure what they are. I think they're just, um, uh, <laughs> they got this stupid comic here. It's like with the Terminator and Robocop and stuff. This is to, to show off uh, a portfolio they sell of her or something. I, it looks pretty good. I might spend a couple bucks. I mean, look at this picture here. This is Gloria Galaxy. Come on. This is cartoons, baby. <laughs> get it. All right, cool. that's, uh, that's it on the regular reviews. And I didn't even know about this. This <laughs> is a surprise the, to me. And the quick reviews, she's, she's nice looking. Uh, Steve's going to do, uh, we didn't have time to do a regular uh, comic um, um, industry magazine or anything. So Steve's going to do the Overstreet book. All right, I'm going to review the Overstreet comic book companion. This is the sixth edition, so you're going back a little ways, but... Uh, it's an identification and price guide from the King of Comic Collections, Robert M. Overstreet. This one, this has everything you ever wanted to know about any comic book. It's got the latest price guides, but like I said, this one's the sixth edition, so it's a little bit older. Uh, it's got the latest, latest prices out on the market. It, it deals with collectible toys, like in the back of this one. It has all collectible rings from when you were a little kid. You know, you used to get those rings out of cereal boxes. Some of them are worth $5,000 now. Um, why this, didn't I keep mine? Like I said, I don't know, why didn't you? I don't know. This, this has everything about every comic book ever printed. Every title, every company, everything. This one, this is, wasn't that expensive. This was only $8, $6 US, $8 Canadian. This was definitely worth it. This is for somebody who's collecting and doesn't want to buy the big book that cost like sixteen ninety five. dollars Go to your bookstore and pick this one up. This one's well worth it, and I'd say that I'd give this a top rating for um, pricing your comic books. Overstreet's supposed to be the, the number one. That's what most of them go by. You, know, you get Wizard and you get Hero on those, but Overstreet's supposed to be the one that's uh, the closest to actual prices. Of actual reality. Right. Okay, um, Steve, you want to start out with our weekly quick pick hits 
previews and everything else. Quick pick hits previews. Yeah, that's like that's that. that's our new one. Quick pick hits previews and everything else. Okay, for number one, I'm going with Eclipso number fourteen. After the horrifying events in Eclipso number thirteen, so apparently if you didn't read thirteen, you ain't gonna know what I'm talking about with I'll fourteen. Amanda must deploy the surviving shadow fighters for one last mission into the Parador against Eclipso. Shipment is October 21st. It's $1.25. And I read a couple of the Eclipso series, and I really like them. So this one should be pretty interesting because it's drawing down Eclipso. to a Nero. Is that what it is? That's the one. Eclipso with the Jacques Cousteau? Read. Okay. okay uh, <clears throat> the first one I've got this week in my preview, my quick pick hit. Or whatever I want to call it. Quick this pick is preview Arc, hit. Our comics, next, number one. This is from Our Comics. And they spelled A R C O M I C S. So it's like saying our comics, but it's our comics or arc comics. Arc. However, you, however you want to say it. Anyways, it's 250, it's full color. This issue features another one of their characters in a full length story uh, to full the, and further introduces the whole team. Our comics is a new company. They're trying to develop something a little different. They're letting the readers pick who's going to come out with the first full length book. And. Um, Sounds like an interesting comic a com a concept, as I get that word concept. out. Concept. Okay, we'll see how this story is, though. I don't know anything about it. I've, I've read a lot of stuff, seen previews, but I haven't actually read anything about, actually read the book. Coming early October, and uh, maybe we'll get it. Should be interesting. We'll try and review that one. Yes, we will. Okay, for my second week, I'm going with Justice League America number 83. After Guy Gardner seemingly kills a villain in cold blood, the Justice League America pursues him and learns the truth behind the Gardner homicidal new twist. The Gardner. This issue oh, directly it. leads into Guy Gardner number 15. Now, apparently Guy Gardner is going bad, which I never liked the guy anyway, so I could care less. Maybe Lobo will come along and kill him. Shipping date is October 25th. This one sells for a dollar and a half, and it sounds interesting just to see what's going to happen with him. The Gardner did it. The Gardner did it. The next one I have is pass number one. I'm taking a chance here. This is a 32-page digest size black and white. It's for mature readers. It's put out by Atomic Comics. It looks like a bunch of short, goofy, possibly stupid like me stories. You might want to try. You might want to see if you can find it and read it in the store. It might be better off staying there. You can tell we're taping late at night. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for this one. Okay. For my third one, I'm going with Metal Man number three. <laughs> the Metal Men start to take back their old lives while Mercury steals the newest Metal Man from their enemies. And the villains behind the group's recent tragedy stand revealed. The Missile Men. Metal Men, Missile Men. Could, Metal could, missile. could meet disaster Metal here. Missile. Metal Missile. <laughs> Shipping date is November 11th. This one sells for $1.25, and it sounds interesting because I used to read the old Metal Men series, and they're trying to follow up on the old Metal Men series. It's pretty good, so I would definitely recommend that one. Excellent. Excellent choice, Steve. Thank you, Michael. And my last one this week is... Excellent choice, Michael. Why, thanks. I thought it was, too. <laughs> Thank you. And we'll see you next week. Oh, <laughs> anyways, actually, my last one this week is from Boneyard Press. This is Flowers on the Razor Wire number 2. It's black and white, and it's definitely for adults. Uh, Jesus and Satan play games with mortals uh, just because they're kind of bored and they have Checkmate. Uh, oh, yeah, there we go. Ooh, Ooh sizzle. Uh, <laughs> but they have nothing better to do, so they do that. Uh, it's interesting to say the least. And as a side note, um, Hartie Fisher, who is the publisher of Boneyard Press, his fiance was murdered uh, in real life. So Boneyard stuff might be a little late. I'm not sure if, uh, if any of it's going to be late. He's trying to get his whole act together hmm. to continue. Uh, a lot of people don't like him because he puts out this weird stuff, and they all put him down. But he's still a human being. I mean, guy's got feelings. His fiance was murdered. There's no reason for anything like really? that. Really? Really? But what do we got now? I think uh, we're doing our convention own mention. Convention mentions. We're going to mention some conventions, and guess what? We're not going to mention anymore. What are we not going to mention? The Star Trek convention, cause it's over with. And guess what? You saw it last week if you were watching. Yes. Because we had a big 15-minute preview. Yes. Okay, the second Wednesday of each month, I know you're getting sick of this one, too. But, hey, <laughs> it happens every second Wednesday. Yeah, of each know? month, the Knights of St. John on Union and William Street has a card and comic show. Uh, the next one is September 8th of this coming month. We're going to so. try and hit that one. 
Yeah, we're we'll gonna, try and hit it. If anything, we're going to hit it, and we're going to take everything we can. So anyway, if you see us there, say, hey, we know you. We know you. And uh, at September 11th at the Elks Lodge, three or 285 Kenmore Avenue, they have a free show. Uh, go out and stop there. That's where last time yeah, we, were, we were there. It was a pretty good show. They had um, more uh, music than comics, though. Yeah, but. more music. It was definitely. It was. It, it said. In fact, it said it was a card and comic show, but it was more like a music and comic, and comic show. show. Yeah. But there was some some comics there. Uh, sometimes you can pick up some good stuff. Some yeah. dealers dump and stuff. Okay, and the biggest show to hit our area of all time, like we've been saying, is September nineteenth and eighteenth, which I said it backwards, but oh well. Sunday at the Erie Saturday. County <laughs> Fairgrounds. Sunday first, Saturday yeah. second. Go Sunday and then back it up and go Saturday. At the Erie County Fairgrounds. Now, this is supposed to be the biggest comic book show to ever hit Western New York, so we'll have to check that one out. Too. Saturday the 18th, we're going to probably go. Yes. Sunday, which you don't know yet, uh, there is a, a small convention in Utica, which the, really? ninth, the 19th. Had. Well, like the, I don't think I can go the 19th because that's my one-year anniversary and my no. wife would kill no, me. No, I might be able to make that one. Michael though, might be able to Even make. though it's three hours away. My brother lives there. Maybe we can make it there. Yeah, well, there you uh, go. There's supposed to be a lot of D.C. artists there, D.C. personnel, so maybe we can get some uh, footage there. Um, let's see, what else do we got? Holy cow, nothing. <laughs> wow. Um, I think, I think that's all. How much time are we running? Lost track. Anyways, uh, I guess that's it for this week. Yeah. We, we did our reviews, our previews, and everything else. Uh, next week, we're going to be back on track. We're filming this way late at night and way late in the week. Usually, we got this done on the weekend, so things got all screwy this weekend. Plus, I'm in the midst of this is final finish up. I'm writing a book, and I'm just at the end of it here, and uh, it's there's too much going on at one time. Yeah. So, until next week. Yes. When you patronize your local comic shop, tell them you've seen it on Comics, comics TV. TV. Peace. We'll see you Bye. next week. Bye bye. bye. <laughs>